important choral commission came in 1990, a mass for Westminster Abbey. Yes, that, that came about um, with contact from Martin Neary um, suggesting the project. And I went to London and had a couple of meetings with him and obviously heard the choir, which I'd al already heard, obviously in situ before, and I'd heard them on recordings and broadcasts. And one of the main attractions, obviously, therefore, was writing for such a highly professional choir and also the acoustics of the building. So that was, um, for me, a, a very stimulating challenge. And it was a piece that I enjoyed writing very much. And uh, it had very, very good performances. Another commission, this time for the Hilliard Ensemble and the 1992 Vale of Glamorgan Festival, resulted in Lux Perpetua. The way you assemble the text here is particularly interesting. Yes, I decided that I would use the text for the Requiem Mass, but not the whole text. But I decided, in fact, to use basically fragments from the overall text and to assemble them together in terms of a meditative process, really, because I was thinking about texts as acts of meditation. By that, I mean short texts, which very often are repeated. Therefore, that 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 quality of the meditative element would come across in the music as well, would be associated between the music and the text. Now that was something that I had done before in Epitaphium, because Epitaphium was an assembly of assemblage of texts from various sources, um, and then that became important from that point on, because in one of the most recent choral works, The Sacred Chants, that's basically what happens in that piece, is in that it is an assemblage of texts, very often one or two word phrases returning, and a, a meditation upon the texts, and therefore a meditation in the music as well. You compose two sets of evening canticles just after you finish teaching at Bangor. They're very different. One is tranquil, with more than a hint of plain chant about the vocal lines. The other is rhythmic and far more extroverse. Can you describe the processes at work here? Yes, the difference between the two pieces is to do basically with the circumstances of the pieces. Uh, the first one that you mentioned, um, making use of plain chant, uh, n not existing plain chant, uh, I must say, but this was commissioned for the choir of Bangor Cathedral. Uh, there was a f weekend visit of the Friends of Cathedral Music, uh, during which I gave a talk to them. And then on the Sunday, this first commission, the one for the Bangor Cathedral Choir, was performed by that choir. And I wrote it, therefore, or to, to a certain extent, without there being too much problems in rehearsal time. So I think the piece is fairly straightforward. The second one I wrote for different circumstances. It was written for the Choir of St. George's Chapel, Windsor. But I wanted to adopt a different approach in that piece because I wanted to make it a far more rhythmic piece. Uh, the Bangor one was fairly subdued, very reflective. Again, rather meditative, really, going back to what I was saying earlier. So that's the reason for the difference between the two pieces. But that difference between the very still music, between the very active music, had always existed in my music from very early on. And from around about that point on, little before perhaps, but certainly afterwards, uh, to a certain extent, what I do is concentrate on one, uh, say for example, the very still music, write a piece of very still music, or write a very active piece. You've concentrated more and more in recent years on writing for smaller forces several substantial piano works, uh, plus chamber music, instrumental works, and a great deal of choral music. What are the particular attractions of the medium for you now? I've always had, of course, uh, a great attraction for choral music and a great attraction, obviously, for writing choral music. That goes back, uh, what I was saying at the very beginning of this, goes back to a very early age when I joined a choir, uh, the church choir, and then of course when I was a student at Cardiff singing in the Palestrina choir. And so that has remained with me always, the sound of 
choral groups, the sound in particular buildings, obviously, especially buildings with great resonance, so that's obviously been of considerable interest to me. And I've been very fortunate in terms of being able to write for you and your choir, Altairi. And there have been, of course, a number of performances of my music by you and the choir, and they've always been great learning experiences because obviously working with a choir, having reactions and so on, and keeping the sound of choral music available to me and still fresh to me. We've worked together on a number of choral projects, and I think the sequence of Sacred Chants is a unique achievement. 11 pieces, 80 minutes in performance. Can you describe how the pieces came to be written? Well, again, it goes back to what I was saying, of course, because these pieces were written with you and Altairi Choir in mind. Now, those pieces, the first four, I wrote in 2003. I wrote them as preludes to existing choral pieces because, as you know, the, your choir sang uh, some of my pieces. Hymnus Antisomnum was one example, Carmen Pascale, and other pieces as well. So these chants, each individual chant was written as a prelude to an existing piece. Then the pieces were put away, other things were done, and then I decided to continue with the pieces. Um, there were various triggers for those pieces. One was the death of the Italian composer Luciano Berio, where I decided that one of the chants should be a passacaglia in memoriam Luciano Berio. So that's a piece, of course, for choir and organ. The total number of chants is 11. That, that's the complete work. And of course, you and the choir did the first performance of those pieces in Manchester Cathedral a few years ago. You once described the function of music in the liturgy as being there to prepare and elevate the mind. I often think of pieces like the sacred chants as meditations. How far would you agree with that? Going back to when we did the concert with you and the Altair Ch Chamber Choir in Bangor Cathedral, uh, the early part of the last decade, and what we decided was to have the texts read before each piece. Now that appealed to me greatly and particularly because a number of the texts in those pieces were very short fragment, fragments, words or phrases repeated over and over again. So me experiencing that in the cathedral is a live experience of hearing a speaker speaking the texts first in Latin, then in English, and then the performance became a very moving part of the whole process. That's where I think that the use of the word meditative, meditation, is exactly right, because that was part of it. Uh, and so I think that that, where possible, should always be done with a performance of the complete sacred chants, where the text should be read beforehand as part of the overall artistic uh, experience. Well, Jeff, many thanks for some fascinating insights into your career and into your choral music in particular. Thank you, David.